Ladies and gents, welcome back. I do this every week. We missed out last week because Marty was away on a big old hike and well, that's what he does the best and that's how we know him on YouTube. In fact, go subscribe to his channel. But in the meantime, let's talk politics with Marty up north. Thanks for uh, joining me again. Hey, Clyde, always good. Uh, you know what? Uh, yeah, I, I like to, uh, it's too bad we were going to do a show last week because it is fun when I leave for four or five days and then I get to come back and, you know, you were going to bring me up to speed, but I couldn't get back until Wednesday uh, late. So, um, hey, it's a thing. It's a thing. It, it's a thing, but it, but it, and it's also a great segue into the fact that, you know, I can disappear into the forest for about four or five days and then I keep my fingers crossed that when I come out of the woods, the world hasn't gone crazy. And, um, you know, I've had some historical moments where I come back from a long trip and the world has gone crazy. This past week, the world hasn't gone crazy, but it's been the usual Canadian <laughs> silliness, right? I mean, it's... The recent I, history I silliness, yeah, the way it's been it's lately. It's totally silly. And yeah, yeah, by the absolutely. way, anybody who's tuning in to this, uh, go check out Marty up north on his YouTube channel. You usually plug it at the end, but we're talking about it now. Might as well plug it now. Uh, Marty, you do all, right. all kinds of uh, hikes and, and footage of that stuff. You t stick to the politics on Twitter and here, but uh, it's outdoorsy stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and, and we've said it in the past. If anybody's interested in learning about hiking, wants some suggestions for hiking in the Canadian Rockies, just... Find me on YouTube, send me a note, and I usually reply to everybody. I, I love introducing people. I love this province, and I love welcoming people here. Absolutely. Links in the description down below. But let's get into this. So inflation, they made the, the official numbers came out. Uh, and, well, it's lower. Apparently, we, we're, we have the lowest inflation. The, the Bank of Canada has been doing their job according to themselves, and uh, we're now at 2.8%. Now, my, the, my big qualm with this is how they keep changing what the ruler is, what the, what the yardstick is for measuring this. They change what's in what we know as the basket of goods, the CPI, the Consumer Price Index. And when that changes, it changes, essentially, we, we don't know where a foot is because the yard, it's the yard this week, it's a foot next week. Um, the big thing that that they're they're actually uh, well because food prices have not gone down on average they're nope. nine point one percent up uh, some some things like meat are at six point nine percent up things I, I think like bread and whatnot are way up in the twelve percent fourteen percent up region but it was it was actually cell phones and internet service providers that went down in price so bringing down the the CPI to this two point yeah and, and, and the, as you sort of of alluded to there's two things i don't like about the way they calculate the uh, inflation one i is is what constitutes the basket of goods keeps seems to change for instance you know they'll they'll put gasoline in there but they'll discount gasoline they'll do gasoline they'll do wholesale gasoline which you and i don't pay wholesale no gasoline. no we, we don't pay at the pump gasoline so i don't like some of the games they play but i also don't like the fact that they take um sort of a month over month number and then extrapolate that to the year. So if they have a good month like June, for instance, and then they'll say, oh, we're down and then they'll extrapolate that. So I I, I wish they did a monthly inflation, you know, just show just show historical what was the last month and let us in, uh, extrapolate and figure out what's going on. And I think that'd be more revealing. But um, yeah, this is a case of, of uh, this is definitely a case of Canada well, you know, the, the, the liberals, the, the government trying to brag about something they've done for inflation, but it's like, what have actually, what have you actually done for inflation? I don't think the government could, could actually say they've done anything for inflation. I mean, they gave people a bit of free money last month or last week, you know, gave grocery money, but that doesn't control inflation. So, um, we're smarter than that. Canadians, Canadians, Canadians are having a hard time reconciling the fact that the government says 2.8%. But as you pointed out, uh, my grocery bills keep going up. I mean, my, my wife is, is constantly like, well, speaking of hiking, let, let, let me bring that up. I posted a picture the other day. So I went hiking with two people and uh, my buddy put me in charge of buying the groceries. And I posted a picture. I bought a little basket, a little purple bin full of groceries. And it was $98. Ninety eight dollars. And I'm not that, yeah. eating and I'm not eating, you know, uh, steak and, and, and chicken on the trail. I'm I'm using fairly cheap, uh, high calorie, high sodium processed foods like craft dinner and oatmeal and and uh, salamis and stuff like that. And peanuts and ninety eight dollars like it's outrageous. I, I don't know how 
it's totally outrageous. Well, I think these I, I numbers, the government... what these numbers do is they give people false hope because I, I have a colleague that I work with. He's his mortgage. He was on a variable rate and it went crazy uh, because because of the variable rate and the interest rates spiking. And he 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 saw the headlines and just went about his day. But he he just assumed 2.8. Great. That means interest rates are going to come down soon. But if you read into the fine print, you start reading into these articles that are talking about it. They interviewed the Bank of Canada and the Bank of Canada said, no, it looks like we're going to be going up further this summer. Uh, well, interest we, rates are coming. I think, yeah, it's been two weeks since we spoke. Then the last, uh, so last week, the Bank of Canada did increase the interest rate to five percent, uh, the overnight lending rate. So that's mm -hmm. as as a as an increase, you know, and again as an increase in a short term, and as a percentage year over year. Like when the interest rate goes from one to five, people. Uh, I, I'm surprised that people don't understand that that's a fourfold increase. That's a huge increase. That's way more. That's way more damaging than going from 18 to 20 percent. Although I'm glad we're not in the 18 percent range. But you know <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying. As a as a as a as a percentage, we've had a fourfold increase in interest rates in a year. And the Bank of Canada has said that there's two or three more. Not said, hinted that there's more interest rates uh, hikes in the near future. Speaking of the Bank of Canada. Uh, they gave themselves bonuses. The Bank of Canada last year, you know, lost nearly a billion dollars. It's a crown corporation. First time ever. 87 year, first time ever in its 87 year history, loses nearly a billion bucks. And they give themselves like, I don't know, uh, out of the 2000 employees, they paid out something like $40 million in bonuses. If you do the math, it's like, wow, that's a big number. That is a big number oh, well. for, for being yeah, a failure. A it seems like in, in government, you always just fail upwards. There's no... There's no other trajectory for, for government workers. No, no. But, well, and a lot of people are looking for more money. And this is a perfect segue into the next story of the the ports. So we have port workers that are on strike right now. And this is a, a yep. big issue. The federal government is on, well, the, the parliament's on, on leave right now. So they're they're on their holiday. But this needs to be resolved because this is this is costing a ton of money. And this is, this is the whole point here. The reason why a lot of viewers of this channel are really interested in this story is well, it wasn't that long ago, it was only a year and a half ago, the government made a big old stink about a bunch of truckers that went to Ottawa and Coots and the border in Surrey and said, we're going to put a put a slowdown on things because we don't like what the government's doing. Now, these people are just fighting for what they believe is, is fair compensation for their, their job. They're not fighting for something larger, but they seem to be doing more damage than the truckers did in uh, the trucker convoy. It doesn't get the same um, big stick treatment that, you know, the guys at Coots got, people at Coots got arrested. Ultimately, when 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 uh, some Canadians blocked the borders, the government invoked the Emergency Measures Act. Um, but so back to, yeah, to, to this strike. So this strike is the longshoremen is what they're called, right? So mm -hmm. these are the guys who load and unload the boats that come into the harbor. And, and the big port is the one in Vancouver. Actually, Vancouver, the British Columbia has ports up and down the coast, and the Maritimes have several ports, but it's the ones in British Columbia. They did have an agreement. So that, that that's this is the funny part and the not so funny part about this thing is that um, minister, um, the ports come under sort of two ministries. One is uh, transportation and the other one is labor in a sense. And uh, Seamus O'Regan was bragging last week that they, the government had negotiated an agreement with the, the longshoremen and the, the was going to end the strike. And then uh, today he had to retract that statement because uh, it, it no deal the the no deal the union didn't actually the union negotiators didn't even present the deal to their union for a vote which is bizarre um, and they're so and and apparent and it was a good deal like it was you know we're talking about a ten percent wage increase over the next four years so something pretty reasonable that most Canadians should be happy about and um, and it it it, it failed. So the the rumor, not the rumor now, but now you got ministers, you got individual premiers of provinces saying enough is enough. This has to end because, as you pointed out, a, a shutdown of a border or a port is costing Canadians 10 to 20 million dollars a day. So this is starting to have an impact on the bottom line of businesses. So if you think you're if you think your inflation is big right now and the government's bragging about it coming down, it's going to go up if they don't resolve this quickly. But I don't think the app. 
um, the government doesn't have the appetite to resolve this. You know, um, to me, to me, the longshoremen should be declared an essential service at this point, and the strike should be ended, or it should be ended under the same kind of pretext that that Coots was ended and other blockades were ended as a threat to. Which, 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 back to the Emergency Measures Act, when that was invoked and there were some of the issues, you know, we were bringing that up to the government. You're opening a can of worms, man. If you if you consider um, invoking the War Measures Act or the Emergency Measures Act for things other than direct threats to sovereignty, so they were using the excuse that it was a threat to, wasn't this, uh, you know, what the truckers were doing was a financial threat to the country. Mm-hmm. And so they justified the Measures Act. Well, now you haven't, you know, it's a can of worms. You have another financial threat to the country. Yeah, uh, this one, this one will, this one's going to be tough to resolve. We'll yeah. see uh, if the government has a willingness to resolve it. Um, right now, they're they're using a few tools at their disposal, but they might have to recall government somehow or other, uh, reopen the session of parliament to deal with this one. This this can't keep going on. I mean, this this. Um, no, this can't keep going on. Well, many people have said that Trudeau, if he didn't have double standards, he probably wouldn't have any standards at all. So, I mean, there is that, yeah. and that's him bringing that to the table. Now, totally. speaking of Gilbo's cabinet and, and other ministers, uh, we have the Minister of the Environment, uh, which is an interesting, precacious uh, uh, position, especially when uh, the environment is so po- politicized these days. And he's, uh, well, that's, yeah. that's Gibo, Stephen Gibo. And he's having his own fight with Alberta, which Trudeau essentially started. What's what's happening with that? Yeah, Trudeau started it when he came here. Um, well, Trudeau started it a long time ago, you know, uh, years ago with his Justin, I call, not Justin, just transition. So right. Trudeau wants us to transition to something else. Um, but and, and Trudeau came here during Stampede a week ago, had a very brief meeting with Danielle Smith. And Danielle Smith said... Uh, that that what the government, uh, the federal government was proposing was was tantamount to a suicide that that, you know, eliminating uh, reducing emissions that drastically would require an absolute cap in oil production and things like that. So so Danielle basically said your plan is unrealistic. Trudeau went away, didn't like that. Looks like he didn't like it, then went away and doubled down. And now he sent Gibo here and Gibo came back with the same message uh even more threatening and um so now there now there appears to be a real fight so danielle smith went out of her way to actually respond to gilbo in writing what she had told to trudeau a week ago she put it in writing saying your plans are unrealistic we cannot we cannot get to net zero in 2050 and she put out a number she i don't know if her number was for alberta alone or for Canada as a whole, I think it was for Alberta alone, but Danielle basically said it would be $1.8 trillion to redesign our grid and and make our electric grid net zero by 2050. Well, $1.8 trillion, man, if I do the math, you know, that's that's it's in the millions of dollars per person. Like these numbers that we're throwing around are so ridiculous. And 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 I stand by Danielle as an engineer that you cannot you cannot rip out infrastructure and rebuild not even in not even in 50 not even in 25 years because the original infrastructure is built to last 25 30 years so if you you know it's it's insane and so he's picking a fight he's picking a fight and and he's not even talking to danielle he's actually i guess he's doing what he should be doing is he's going to our energy minister and talking environment to energy minister but it but they're picking a fight and um, it's increased, you know, behind the scenes, there have been a lot of polls right now. The, uh, Alberta's separatist sentiment is the highest it's ever been since I've been in this province. And and um, we're, in a sense, we're kind of, you know, we're, I, I was kind of wishing for a fight like this because, you know, when Danielle got elected, she, she, she we talked about this. She is a threat to Ottawa and mm-hmm. we wondered what would happen. And uh, Ottawa looks like they want to pick a battle with Alberta. I, Again, I'm not sure why they don't need to. They don't need to, but they want to pick a battle with Alberta, but and this, I think they picked the wrong. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. And there's there's so many provinces that are standing by because I mean the the whole hopes of, of her winning that uh, for a lot of other provinces was to send the message to other provinces that this can be done. We can be we can fight for our sovereignty as as a provincial government as a, and not have the 
the Confederation rule over us as a, as a federal government. And that's kind of the, the hopes with that there. Yeah. And especially yeah. with a government that's being so, so pushy, uh, so pushy with so many different uh, policies that are, yeah. that are, that are wi- widely changing to a lot of people's lifestyles and, and livelihoods. And a guy like Guibault scares me because, you know, we, we knew of him. I mean, he's newly elected. Like he wasn't an, he wasn't a politician until the last election. Mm-hmm. I mean, Prior to that, he's known as he's basically a a, a very um, he's a diehard environmentalist. He's he's a you know he he makes Greenpeace look like you know. Well, he was Greenpeace. He was he was arrested he, he, being a, a, an activist with them. Absolutely. So he was a true activist, and then and then Trudeau tapped him on the shoulder. He's a Montrealer, and then he ran in the twenty twenty one election and got elected. It's like holy smokes, we just elected basically a guy with a criminal record, a, a very strong uh, environmental activist, and then Trudeau made him minister. It's like whoa. So he's you know we went from Cat McKenna to Gilbo. I don't know which is worse, but um, but. Yeah, time will tell, but but it's it's a good it's going to be a good test. He's he, Danielle is uh, digging in her heels on this one in a very reasonable way. She's using a very practical approach, which is trying to negotiate, but saying you know trying to negotiate, present facts. What you want to do is unreasonable, but but and and she's being uh, sincere in the fact that she will fight. This is this is existential for Alberta. I mean, if we destroy our oil economy, our oil industry. You know, as diversified as we are, we can't take that kind of hit. That's that's too big of a hit, especially since we're letting in, uh, which is a good segue. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Alberta, the whole country is on on track for letting in a million immigrants in 2023. Like halfway through the year, Alberta has admitted 200,000. Ontario's admitted 400,000. Quebec's admitted like 200,000. Man, we're we're going to we're going to add a million new immigrants to this country. Yeah, it's so. it's ridiculous, and I'm and I'm not I'm not against immigration. This is always the thing that people they'll they'll paint you into a corner politically and say, oh, you you don't want all these immigrants. That that means you're against. Them. My wife's an immigrant. My parents were yeah. immigrants. This is not a thing that I'm against. I'm all for people coming to Canada and contributing to society. I showed a video this morning that Harrison Faulkner. He was interviewing a guy in Toronto who came here from Nigeria with very little information. He was told, promised all these things. And then he gets here and what did he want to do? He said he wanted to work, take the money and go. That, that was his main purpose of coming here. That's not that's not yeah. the idea of immigration. That's not the idea of, of bringing people to this country. The idea to bring, I mean, if it's a temporary work visa, the, the, we have those and apply for those. But we're, we're talking about people, people who are, are coming here and they have completely different ideas and they're being lied to by politicians who have different ideas for themselves. And I, I really think that a lot of politicians are just trying to fuel this uh, social safety net of, uh, of social insurance with, when it comes to the pension plan and all this other stuff. They're trying to pad it so things don't happen on their watch. But we, we really need to address these things instead of just bringing people in with false promises. No, no, I, I, I agree. I mean, I, you know, I, I, absolutely. Like we need to bring in immigrants. Um, I think I think most immigrants do come here with a good intentions. But, you know, there's a few bad ones and there's a few people on, on both sides. You know, there's people who want to bring in immigrants for bad reasons and there's immigrants who come here for bad reasons. But generally speaking, we have good intentions. Uh, but But I think. Uh, we're bringing them too fast mm-hmm. and we're not giving them the tools to to integrate properly. The, the, you know, we're bringing them too fast, but we're also bringing them with a long term view of helping problems long term. I mean, they will be contributors, but in the short term, they're doing a lot of they're not they're not themselves doing damage, but they're not, you know, they're hurting uh, inflation and other things. I mean, we we have we, you know, we have a, we have a short supply of housing. We have a short supply of of all sorts of things and bringing in a bunch of people isn't helping. No, not at all. Um, well, yeah, yeah. With, with food prices on the rise and with housing in a massive shortage. Yeah. That doesn't, that doesn't yeah, help. Now, on that one, I, I just want to mention a funny, weird story. I don't know if you heard this one, but so the, the Canadian government again was bragging about how they're bringing in immigrants and giving them the tools and so forth. And one of the programs the government did, I, I can't remember what they call it, but they, they're, they we we offered uh, ten thousand uh, visas, very open-ended visas, 
offered to tech workers in the U.S. So in the U.S., there's workers that have something called an H-1B visa. Same thing. A lot of a lot of immigrants want to go to the U.S. and getting into the U.S. pretty easy, but then staying there, getting your green card long term. And so some of them are are having their visas expiring. So Canada quickly said, hey, come on over here. So we issued 10,000 of these visas. We thought it would take you know months before everybody applied for them. They opened it up last week. Within two days, all 10,000 visas are gone. So, so American people hoping to get into the US took the Canadian one quickly. The Canadian government's been bragging about it for a couple of days now saying, hey, you know, we're, we're taking in 10,000 new high tech workers. But we're not. These are these are immigrants that are that are choosing. They're they're picking up every visa possible, hoping to get somewhere. But deep down, they want to go to the U.S. Right. And, and um, so yeah. So if if the U.S. ones come available, they'll just either stay there or go go there from where they're, they're from. And, and and it's a typical go government program where they'll they'll claim a success. They'll put in the wrong metric in place to measure it. Issuing the visa is not the metric. The metric should be how many immigrants came in after they issued the visa and settled in and became contributing members of society. You'll never see that metric. You'll never see that. No, metric. you so won't. The government and, will just and we're hearing this story more and more as uh, immigrants are leaving Canada. There's there's actually an exodus of, of immigrants, whether it's people that came here to go to school, learn a profession, and then they get that and then they're not happy with just the way it is here. And then they leave. Oh, well, uh, I saw a, an interesting story the other day about uh, Ukrainian immigrants who had, you know, came here after the war, during the war, settled in Edmonton, and already left because they found it boring, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> uh, we we don't have these we don't have these nice closed communities that they're used to, right? So you, and that's another example. I mean, you take a, an immigrant from different culture and you put them in the wrong environment. It's going to be very, very, very hard to assimilate, right? I mean, I, I don't know what Ukrainians do. Like somebody will, will criticize me on the text, but you know, <laughs> if they like to go to a market and 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 eat a certain food and it's and and socialize and watch football, and we don't offer that in Edmonton, those poor immigrants are bored. They're they're not bored. Well, they're bored. They're lonely. They're you know, they need to they need help integrating. That said, I, I find that a, a little weird because Alberta does have a lot of Ukrainians, but you know, it just goes to show that, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, Integrating be, be careful what yeah. you wish for, because then they'll come up with a new yeah. ministry of integration and then <laughs> that'll be another big boon on our, on our coffers, uh, from the taxpayer. Now, speaking, now, speaking now, now of we're that. Just, we're just, yeah, speaking of, Go ahead, because the Ukraine is making me think of two stories, but maybe you got a story. Okay, well, there, well, there's two. There's two. I got there. three stories on Ukraine. I got three stories on Ukraine. Okay, well, I was gonna go from away from Ukraine. We'll guess we'll get to that after, but I guess we'll get into uh, Marco Mendicino's wife, who's been making money off of the Ukraine, and this is a bit of a yes. double whammy. This sort, this whole story. So. Uh, Marco Minicino has been pretty vocal in pushing Bill C-21, which would yes. basically, with the with the first amendment that they put on it, would make every firearm in Canada illegal, essentially. They're very, that got repealed, but they're very adamant about banning handguns, about banning any type of what they call assault firearms. So that would be yep. anything that uh, what lo looks cool, uh, has ergonomics to it. Um, last time I checked, my um, my drills from DeWalt aren't assault drills. They're just very ergonomic. They might look cool. That's not really the... But maybe you and me are gun people and maybe we, we feel a certain way about it. But yeah, essentially he's trying to ban guns, but yet his wife is on the take from a manufacturer who makes these firearms that they're banning here. And not only that, are they're on the take from this whole Ukraine uh, situation. It, it, right. So the, the really, really big story is that she's in a conflict of interest. No matter what, you know, she, she's profiting from the war in Ukraine. So mm -hmm. and, and she's not supposed to. Something wasn't declared. Mendocino is like, man, that guy is like covered in conflicts and 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 scandals and everything else so this is just one more but but if we learned that his wife was profiting in ukraine from something i don't know if she had bought a hotel in ukraine that was being used to shelter refugees we might give her a break but no she's profiting in ukraine by being a shareholder in i believe it's morton thyrecall or one of those big companies that makes like cruise missiles or something like that like not 
and, and you know, and I'm guessing it's not like ten thousand dollars or five thousand dollars. She's in there for lots of money. So it's, it's North it's, Group it's, uh, uh, Grumman Corporation. Grumman, okay, Grumman, Grumman Corporation. Yeah, yeah, Grumman. Right. So same. They 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 do make the 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 cruise missiles or whatever. So she's so so he's in conflict of interest again, and this time he's in conflict of interest in in a business that's in the business of 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 making weapons while he's trying to ban weapons on our side. It's it's. It's it's sick. It's it is what it is. But, yeah, it's sick. and I want to move on past this one real quick because <laughs> you know I can't. I hope Mendocino. I hope on August fifth that the rumor now is August fifth is when Trudeau's going to shuffle his cabinet. So well, hopefully we'll he out. doesn't just. Yeah, hopefully, you know, God, I think, who did we talk about earlier? Seamus O'Regan. Seamus O'Regan has had like Ministry of Indian Affairs uh workers he's had uh i think he had an energy for one point i mean the guy has failed at every one of those ministries and he's just gonna he was bragging with the strike of the longshoremen he was bragging that he had finally accomplished something everybody's laughing at him We're like oh it took you eight years to accomplish something and then three days later he had to retract anyways uh, i i want to talk another story about um ukraine I got people, people call bullshit on this one, but while I was hiking last week, I'll, I'll go back to while I was hiking. I, I, I came upon uh, a member of the Canadian forces. And so I spent a day in camp at night. At the end of the day, we're, we're hanging around. And I was hanging around with a member of the Canadian forces who, who told me that all eight leopard tanks that Canada had lent to Ukraine have already been destroyed. And, and when I talked about that on Twitter, people said, how would you know that? How would he know that? It's like, I, well, word kind of gets around, old, right? Word gets around. That's what I was, you know, that's what I was going to say. Like if you're, you know, Canada's military is like 50,000 strong. This guy's a high ranking soldier. His job is in, is, is in a, you know, in, in a division where uh, I won't give his unit. I want to get, give him away, but you know, he's in charge of maintenance and that kind of stuff. And he says, we sent soldiers over there with the tanks to, to do the quick maintenance, to hand them over to the Ukrainians, to show them how to use them. And he's like, all those guys are back now because the, the tanks are destroyed. I had no reason not to believe him. And I actually think that that kind, that kind of story makes sense. I have mm. no reason, you know, it's, it's quite legitimately, I mean, what did somebody tell me? Like, you know, I, I can lend you a car, but, but you won't know how to use the car. You won't know how to fly the car. What am I going to do? Give you three days of, of lessons on how to use a, can, a tank and then away you go. Am I surprised that it's demolished? No. Uh, were they sent there for the purpose of being demolished? Well, Perhaps. call me cynical, but uh, we had a, we had a lot of aging equipment, and and this yeah. this this uh, this is this is the unfortunate thing about warfare and when war breaks out, it, a lot of people's eyes roll over with dollar signs, and and some really seedy people get into this uh, situation. It would be easier to get, lend all of our equipment over there and then have an excuse for new contracts to re-outfit ourselves with uh, yeah. new equipment than it would be to send that new equipment to the Ukraine in the first place. So, uh, Absolutely, absolutely. I, 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 so I, I, you know, I, got, I got criticized for talking about that on Twitter and people said that that story made no sense. I'm like, no, that, that story makes a lot yeah, of sense. Yeah, you just, you so, really got it. And maybe I'm cynical, but yeah. like I, I do see the world this way. And there's, there's a lot of people that are really happy to profit from, from warfare. And, and it's a lot of the reason why a lot of this stuff gets fueled in the first place and why we don't find the, the, resolution. The, the, the cruise missiles that, that are made by, yeah, the cruise missiles made by Grumman that are sitting there in the warehouse. The Americans need to use them. You know, the joke is they have an expiry date. So you need to, you need to shoot them off before the expiry date and then buy another, whatever, 200 of them for $10 million a piece. So, uh, it's big industry, you know, what do they call that? The, uh, the industrial industri complex. military, yeah. military industrial complex in the U S is a big deal. And in Canada too. I mean, um, so yeah, that, and, and the last story on Ukraine, it's not Canadian related, but it made the news this week. You know, the, the defense minister of Ukraine, allegedly bought his his daughter who just got married a seven million euro uh place in france and so people are like oh my god oh, okay like, so they're doing on, you know? well they're doing well, well oh yeah doing, yeah totally 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 you know, yeah that's it, just it, that's just disappointing to hear about it's uh, yeah, yeah it yeah. is no I, corruption is is never good to hear about especially when when people are dying i really really 
I, I can't I can't stomach that very much myself. Yeah. yeah. But well, in, uh, let's on a on a little bit lighter note, but this is still more more stuff being wasted. The the Governor General of Canada, she uh, she went on a on a little holiday again. You know, we keep hearing about these holidays. There was the last the one where they went to I think it was Dubai. It cost one point something million dollars for a a few days trip. This time, Iceland. With the she was she was invited at um I'm gonna say like a book fair like something really ridiculous you know and 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 of course she travels kind of like the prime minister I mean she is one of Canada's key representatives so where she goes she has an entourage she goes on the jet last time the controversy was that on the jet that she flew on the 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 food bill for the jet never mind the cost of the jet or the dozens people on there the food bill on the jet last time was two hundred thousand bucks or whatever oh. sorry about that <laughs> um so the controversy this time is the costs overall are astronomical but one cost in particular her hotel was 500 yards away from the conference and she rented a limo and her limo bill was seventy one thousand dollars so i think you interviewed franco from the taxpayers federation yeah. this morning or yesterday and franco made a great point franco said for $71,000 for four days, she could have bought a brand new Mercedes Benz limousine, driven it back, had some, and a chauffeur, had it driven back and forth and left it on the dock with the keys in, said, here's a gift from Canada to the people of Iceland. But no, she, she, she hired a limo for that crazy amount. For an eight-minute walk, like an eight-minute yeah, walk. Eight minute this walk. is ridiculous. In the middle of summer, it's not like it was winter time and she couldn't she couldn't get outside. This is it's, it, it, it's egregious. And, and, and I keep and I keep going back to you know long long David Dingwall or whoever it was. You know that I'm entitled to my entitlements. That old quote from the liberals, and then the, the conservatives fired Bev Oda for buying an eighteen dollar glass of orange juice. I mean, I've been on business trips where. Um, you know, it, it, sometimes you're screwed. You're on a business trip and, and you don't really have a lot of choices. And it's like that, that glass of orange juice will cost you 18 bucks, but I still go out of my way to, to not do that. Um, you know, not saying I don't enjoy my business trips. Yeah. They're kind of a little perk, but man, the, with these guys, it's, it's ridiculous. Like it's, it's over the top luxury um and and not on one occasion I, I mean if the governor general traveled once a year i'd say fine but she's traveling constantly and we're we yeah. keep seeing these things so everything you know it's, it's something else that she was appointed by trudeau um well i'm i'm especially disappointed in mary uh, simpson because she's first nations the, the, the first nations have like this you know and and she rails against colonialism but at the same time, she represents the purest form of colonialism. She's the king's representative to Canada. Yeah. And then she goes out and does this kind of stuff. So I don't know. It, you know, we, you and I, Clyde, keep talking about these things every week. When are Canadians finally going to get fed up? I mean, somebody said that on Twitter. I saw this on Twitter. I think it was a couple of days. Like, when will Canadians get fed up and stand up and fight? And somebody said we won't because there's too many of us that are on the on on the on the dole getting paid by the government, and we'll we'll side with the government. And I I, I get discouraged when I see stories like this. I do. But, yeah. Well, yeah. I I think I still believe in the twenty dollar bacon. When when we see twenty dollar bacon, you're going to see a lot of upset people. And you're going to see a lot of people saying enough is enough. And this whole eat them eat, let them eat cake mentality from from our government at the at the moment is just it, it couldn't fly for much longer after that. Yeah, to me it's 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 uh to me it's it's the next it's this winter. You know, I think a lot of Canadians, especially Eastern Canadians, love their trips to Cuba and the Dominican Republic and places like that. And when those things become unaffordable, hopefully we'll have that that bit of rebellion but um you know i i thought two dollar gasoline would do it apparently two dollar gasoline still isn't doing it no well we had it briefly and then it came down to yeah. it came uh, you know they go over two dollars a ga a liter and then they bring it back down to 190 call it 189.9 and then everybody just kind of deals with it it's the uh ever see that joke of um environment canada it was a skit on um uh, this hour is 22 minutes where uh, Environment Canada does the long term forecast of, you know, minus 20, minus 20, minus 20. And it puts zero degrees on the on the seven day forecast. 
it's going to be zero in the seven day forecast anyways it's <laughs> bring, bring 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 some well no actually back to the you i'm rambling a little bit but back to your point yeah we're bragging about 2.8 percent inflation we shouldn't be bragging about 2.8 percent inflation like it's no nothing to brag about. no it's nothing to it's brag not, about you know like hey we're not we're not last kind of thing like that's what that's what that's what we're being conditioned to do we're 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 being told all the time yeah oh your rights aren't being suspended that badly you, you want to see what it's bad go to go to north korea that's a suspension of rights i'm like wow so we're well, that's the litmus test north- that's the litmus yeah, test, the litmus if, it, test if it's as bad as, yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> our, our inflations i've seen those charts all the time our inflation is not as bad as venezuela right now i'm like it's not as bad as, well okay Right. Well, so, okay, so you, yeah. you got me because you brought up the envir- environmental thing. Uh, this is this was something that was brought to my attention this week, and this one cracked me right up. This is a this is the temperatures in Canada. Apparently, we're having a heat wave, and we're having heat waves all over the world. But the the maps and the the, the scales that they've changed really cracked me up. I'll have to pull this up here. One second. Uh, let me get this uh, right here. This is oh, the, yeah, 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 yeah. these are the temperatures. <laughs> now, these are not, uh, obviously people don't read the temperatures on these maps, but they're not ridiculous temperatures. 26 degrees in Toronto in the middle of July is not terrible. 22 no. in Vancouver is actually quite nice. But uh, I even put this on the tweet that, you know, dangerous red for 28 degrees. Uh, seven degrees is cautiously hot, ev- ev- evidently, even it, way it, up yeah, north. I, <laughs> no, it's just, I, I, so I know exactly what you're saying. I mean, that exact map published 10 years ago would have been all green. All green. <laughs> all green. Or maybe maybe even blue because uh, we would have, yeah, you know, no, no, they're, 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 they're doing that with colors. They're doing that with everything, everything. And yeah. it, it's just, it's misleading. It's complete garbage. And nowhere else is doing it. <laughs> but we're seeing uh, the, this. I, I saw a similar map. Uh, somebody posted one. I, I think Europe was, one of the countries in Europe was doing something similar. To oh, that. okay. Like so, UK yeah, or, I think the UK is doing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it, yeah. if if you I guess if you go to the third world they're not they're not spinning this stuff. Well, it wasn't it, it wasn't just those maps. I mean, you know, la, our phones like uh, you turn on the weather app. Actually, I'm going to do it right now because I'm I'm just that curious. Well, people were sending me uh, actual like comparisons of, from years before. So this was a comparison from 2018. There you go. Uh, there you go. Going to <laughs> current year, <laughs> and just like the 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 temperatures are actually cooler now than they were at the the time then and the maps are completely different scale colors but, and but, but it's so, all over the but place I, and, and that's funny but it's but again when i see something like that like do you think do you think that there's like a directive from like call them gibo to the media saying you gotta ramp up the 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 climate alarm or did the or or does the you know does the network who published that map i don't know who they are ctv did ctv decide to do that on their own because it sells like i'm I, you know I'm, I'm still a little confused why it, like are we in conspiracy theories where the government is telling broadcasters to do this well so i mean i think there's a little bit of a give and take there i, I don't want to say that there is a directive a grand directive or anything like that yeah but you do see you do see like well, for for example, uh, I don't know if you you watch much American news, but the Project Veritas, formerly Project Veritas, is now OMG Media. Uh, James O'Keefe. They do in uh, in depth undercover investigations. They had one guy from CNN openly say, "Oh yeah, the COVID thing's over. We're not going to cover that anymore. We're going to beat the uh, climate thing to death." And that's the new thing. We're going to force it, ram it down everybody's throats, and this is going to be the next the next deal. And we'll milk that one for a long time. Yeah, actually, as you were talking, you 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 made you reminded me of the the answer to the question. It's not a conspiracy. It's not a big come down from 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 Gilbo directive. These things happen because one individual at CTV truly believes in climate change and he's taken on the narrative and he's taken somebody. That's how these things happen. I think more often than not, it's somebody some, you know, it's not a it's not a 200 people conspiracy it's a three people conspiracy it's three guys at ctv who who want to get their message across and they make the the screen red is what's happening and it's a ratings thing i i think honestly like people 
people are neurotic so they'll they'll pay attention to the scary thing and if they're being warned to be afraid of something they'll tune in more to news this is yeah. a known yeah. phenomena that happens so people will drum up fear in the in the media and they're doing it with the weather network now and it's really just absurd it like it's gotten it's, to that point where it's just absurdity it's, it's ridiculous wow <laughs> All right. Well, that's the week in Canadian news. <laughs> that is the week. All right, Marty, I want to thank you again for coming in and uh, sharing your yeah. point of view. Again, tell everybody where they can find you. Marty up north on Twitter, Marty up north on uh, YouTube. And um, yeah, come come see me on YouTube and ask me questions about hiking. Definitely come see me on Twitter. And uh, I'm approaching 50,000 followers on Twitter. I don't know if Twitter doesn't give a plaque like you got for a hundred, but uh, it's a it's a it's a milestone. That you is know, a milestone. Conservatives are not popular on Twitter. We get uh, a lot of effort to silence us. So the more people come and comment, the more you and I can keep providing this kind of um, content. You know, we there's a lot of people trying to quiet us. Yeah, a lot of people trying to. Quiet yeah, there us. is. Yeah. All right, and well, they won't succeed. Awesome, <laughs> no, sticking with it. All right, well, thanks again All for right. joining me, and we'll do this again Cheers. next week. Cheers, everyone. You bet.